Am I on yet? There I am. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to worship. It's a beautiful day. Good day to be in the air conditioning. Uh, and it's good for, uh, for me to be back. I'm glad I was on vacation, uh, gone for a couple of weeks. And uh, it was kind of a working vacation because I was at Heman's camp, running the whole camp. Uh, and I had to go before and after, and it was, it was a lot of work, but um, a great time. And uh, I learned a lot, and I get inspired, and I enjoy running all this stuff. It's kind of fun. We had a wonderful speaker and a wonderful worship leader, and I just kind of kept the whole thing running. So that was fun. Uh, and then when we got back, Jesse went to see this little guy. So there she is, with, and that's, she's still there watching helping to take care of the kids because our son's away. Um, and uh, here's the four of us. I went down Friday, so Maven was like, I don't know if I want my picture taken right now. So she has her bat, she has a Batman cape on. That's, that's her. So she's three, and there's little Baron. Baron's looking at me like, who is that guy? I don't know who that guy is. And there they are, the two of, the two of those little peanuts. So... Uh, it's been a while since I held a crying baby. <laughs> he was crying for a while there. So but we got him going. Uh, fine. So it's time for our call to worship. Like I said, it's good to be back and um, good to be uh, with you all. I missed you guys. Uh, carry on pretty well while I was gone, so that's a good thing. Let me see what I do here. Turn that on. <clears throat> and there you can have that. All right, here's our call to worship. Uh, the bride in this picture represents the church. As a church, we are the bride of Christ. Even us guys, you know, the church is the bride of Christ. He's, he's the groom, okay? Now, in today's weddings, it's all about the bride, right? It's the bride's big day. And the guys are like, just tell me when to show up, and I'll be there. What, what do you want me to wear? Um, you know, and, and so we do. We show up. And we, but back in the day, see, it was all about the groom, because the groom found someone to share his life with. And so it was a big deal for the groom. Uh, and and uh, so for Jesus to be the groom, it's the big deal is that he's coming again. And we are the bride of Christ, right? So... At the very end of the Bible, in Revelation 22, 20, it says, uh, He that testifies these things, Christ, says, Surely I come again. Even, uh, amen. And then the writer says, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. We know you're coming. Even so, come. Come now. Uh, so we're going to sing that song. Called, it's, uh, interestingly enough, called Even So, Come. Uh, so let's stand together and we'll, we'll pray for a moment and then uh, sing a little scripture. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence today to worship you. We thank you that you love us, that you bear with us, uh, that you use us even in our fallacies, Lord, and our failings. You use us. And Lord, uh, as our world seems to be uh, going to a bad place in a handbasket, Lord, we, we, uh, we really just look forward to your coming again, Jesus, um, and that things will be made right when you come again. We know that things are going to get worse, but we can help be, be afraid sometimes, so calm our fears, Lord, but help us to continue to move on even if we are afraid. Um, and, you know, even so, Lord, we pray uh, that you would come. Come soon, Lord Jesus.
all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Even so, come. It ends, ends the Bible with a prayer. Lord, come again. And our God is greater. song is called The Blessing. Uh, you're welcome to sit down. You could stand if you like. I know some, it's better for them to stand and some would rather sit. I guess I was thinking maybe on this song you might just want to let this song wash over you a little bit. It's called The Blessing. It's from number 6, 24 uh, to, uh, through 26. And uh, you've probably heard this. It's the priestly blessing. It's the Lord bless you, the Lord and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and give, uh, turn his face towards you and give you peace. Uh, so uh, recently a uh, songwriter took that verse and put it into 
a beautiful song. So I just received this as a blessing unto the Lord. And uh, the amens are very easy to sing, so you can sing the ah, amen, amen. So you'll get it. That's real easy. Okay. I have every confidence. I do.
So be it, Lord God. May your blessing be upon us. When we thank you, Lord, for going before us and being for us and being within us and being all around us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. Let's have the children come up. To have the little ones come up, and then maybe even the not-so-little ones. It depends on uh, what you want to do. Okay, it's the children's message. I'd like to do a children's message every week. Come on up, Rosalind. Did I say it right, Rosalind? Yeah, Rosalind's with us today. Good job, Rosalind. We're glad you're coming up here. And uh, I saw somebody move into the music back there. I, I, I wish I could have zoned in on Elijah he, because he was in the zone. If I could have camera, put a camera on him. I knew, buddy, you were smiling and moving to the music, and mom was smiling. And that was cool. Hey, you guys know what this is? What do you think this is? Bell. A bell? Uh, it's not a bell it, because it's got something on it. What's this? What do you think that is? It's a handle. Yes, yes. Give me five. Okay. High, high, low, and enough. Okay. Um, this is a handle, and you'll never guess where this handle is from. This handle is from my shower. And this handle, uh, well, I made a big mistake with this handle. You see, it's held on with a screw. Now, it starts getting loose, but that's the, not the screw that, you know, the pastor, sometimes I have a screw loose up here. Well, sometimes there's a screw loose, but I have to take this off to get to the screw that's loose. So I take this off, and I'm very careful because it's like this, and I'm unscrewing it, and I, I hold it in my hand, and then the hose fell down and hit me and hit my hand, and I dropped the screw. So where do you think the screw went? Down, the, well, it went on the ground, which was in the shower, which has a drain. It went down the drain. And then Pastor Bruce said a naughty word. I was so mad, I said a bad word. So now, not only did I make a mistake, but now I've got to ask God to forgive me for saying the bad word. And you know, I was in a hurry. I was rushing. I didn't take my time. We have a mat. I could have slid the mat over the drain. Did I think of that? No. I was like, I'll be real careful. I'll hold on to that screw. I didn't know that the little hose thing up above was going to fall and knock it. And I got so mad. Sometimes you just say a bad word. I don't know if you ever do that. If you do, ask for forgiveness, right? We ask for forgiveness when we, when we make a mistake. And you know what? It's easy enough. This is just a little machine screw nut receiver thing. All I have to do is find a screw that'll fit it. And maybe I'll find one that'll be easier to come off. And then maybe our plumbing expert by the name of Greg can show me why the inner screw keeps coming loose. Um, maybe it wasn't installed right, I don't know, but uh, without the handle, you have to really crank it to get it to go. So anyway, next time, you, next time you make a mistake, think about my handle, okay? Because we all make mistakes, don't we? And then just ask for forgiveness. That's the important thing. You own up to what you did wrong. See, nobody was there. You guys weren't there. You weren't there. Nobody heard my bad word, did they? Or did they? Lord, God did. You'll give me five, won't you? He, did you hear what he said? God did. God heard. And, and, and who you are when no one's around, that's really who you are. So I'm like, oh, i got to pray for more patience. Be careful when I take these things off. When I, when I do mechanical stuff, you never know what can happen. They always get nervous when a power tool gets in my hand. So, because you never know what can happen. So, uh, how's that for, for today? Just uh, uh, ask for forgiveness. And sometimes you have to forgive yourself. You know, I had to forgive myself for being impatient. So, okay, let's pray. Lord, you call us to forgive, even to forgive ourselves. I thank you, Lord, for that scripture that says uh, we're supposed to forgive as many times as it takes. Maybe 70 times 7 or maybe even more. Uh, and so we forgive, Lord, ourselves. We forgive each other and Lord we ask you to forgive us when we make a mistake help us to learn and grow from those mistakes all this in Jesus name and these four lovely people in front said amen you get another virtual high five she got my amen okay you kids can go you can stay here if you want or you can go with the little ones with Miss Elizabeth so 
whichever you decide to do, you can sit with your, gra is it grandma or great grand grandma? Great. I was going to say, I, I was just kind of thinking great grandma. Yeah. And last time she bought a great, she brought a great uh, grandson with her. Uh, the, uh, the, boy, the boy was with her, and uh, about halfway through my message, he raised his hand, and I thought, oh, he's got a question. And he did. He wanted to know if I was done yet. <laughs> are, you, are, are you done yet? Are you, are you going to be done soon? Ugh. We all, yes, we all did get a good laugh out of that one, didn't we? Okay. So we're going to go to the message now, and then um, we'll have a song after that, and then our prayer time. So, And in our prayer time, we'll need to pray for our nation and any other specific requests that you have. And I invite you to jot those down so you remember them, because sometimes we say them, and maybe we don't even remember that we, that we said them. Um, but I'm in Second Chronicles chapter 20 and this summer series has been kind of strange because i've been here and then gone and then here and then it's it's been weird uh, this is the fourth message on excess baggage excess baggage is things that we carry around with us that slow us down it messes us up this guy's got a whole lot of excess baggage uh, and it occurred to me reading this passage Faithless fears, fears that, are, that have no faith behind them, faithless fears are excess baggage, which implies that maybe there are faithful fears. Can you be afraid and still have faith? Well, we're going to talk about that. So here's what we've seen so far. The first message was about how our past sins and our past failures can weigh you down. See, I don't think I'm no longer going to beat myself up for the for the handle and the swear word I said because I've kind of worked through that and now I've shared it with everybody and I, I won't beat myself up for that when I put the handle back on. It, I'm not going to let that weigh me down because see the devil would love to weigh, you think you're, you're, you think you're, you know, you're sanctified? <laughs> that word came out of your mouth and you're sanctified? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, when Bible says you won't continue to sin if you're saved but it also says, when you do sin, ask God for forgiveness. So that's what you do. But, so don't let your past sins and failures, regrets, decisions you make. You know, we make decisions sometimes on a daily basis that have ramifications down the road. And then we look back and go, why, why did I decide to do that? Why, why didn't I ask God first? Or whatever it might be. And then you start regretting. I'm sure nobody else has regrets, but... <clears throat> okay, bountiful blessings. We looked at King Asa. He was like the great-grandson of King David. And he had so many wonderful blessings, and he did all the right things. And it could breed overconfidence. Now, in his case, uh, he had, if you remember, they were the Cushites. Uh, a huge army of a million soldiers came up from the land of Ethiopia, Cush, down there below Egypt. They came all the way up to challenge King Asa. And um, he could have been overconfident. And that's excess baggage if you're overconfident. Well, I got this, the Lord's with me, I'm doing good, and he's blessing me, and you know, you're going to fight me, bring it on. No, <laughs> he prayed, Lord, we are powerless. You know, our half a million soldiers against one million, Lord, you're mighty, you're powerful, we are powerless, please help us. And so Asa rose above that, and he did a great job, King Asa. He didn't end well, though, did he? You can look that up in chapter 17 of 2 Chronicles. Um, and then, dangerous doubts can derail your faith. The same king later on, uh, it was like 20 years later, he, he, he started to doubt, and uh, he was having trouble... This was the time of the divided kingdom. You have the northern kingdom, which was called Israel, and the southern kingdom, which was called Judah. And there were ten tribes to the north and two tribes to the south. The southern kingdom included Jerusalem. Um, and, uh, and so King Asa was the king of Judah. And he was having fights with the king of Israel. 
Because, you know, Israel wanted to, they, it was a civil war between the North and the South. And so um, what does King Asa do? He begins to doubt that God's with him, and he makes an, ally, an alliance with a foreign king and gets that foreign king to turn against the king of the northern kingdom. And um, it, it works from the standpoint of victory, but a prophet comes to him and says, because you did not rely on the Lord, because you relied on this foreign king who you're not supposed to really be having relationships with, uh, maybe, you, maybe you'd need to destroy him in the future, but at any rate, for now, because you didn't rely on the Lord, you're going to have battles until you're, until you're gone. You, your nation will be at war now. Oh, and, and it went on like that for five or six years. And then he got so bitter against God, he got a, a foot infection that was so bad uh, that uh, he, he called in his doctors and, and they couldn't fix him. And so he, just, he didn't even ask God for healing. He just died. So King Asa didn't end well, and yet he's still considered a good king because he led his people to worship God and not worship all the pagan gods. But dangerous doubts, wow, they can derail your faith. And King Asa's faith was derailed at the end. Uh, and that, that is kind of a tragic thing. So now we get into 2 Chronicles 20, and we have the son of King Asa, which is uh, Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat was also a good king. He did the things, uh, he did the good things that his father had done. He tried to live up to the covenant his father had made. And he also, um, he also continued, when he discovered any pagan altars or poles are called Asherah poles, they're obscene, he tore them down. He went to the high places where these altars to false gods tended to be up on the hillsides, up in the mountains. He went and he destroyed all of those. And he worshipped the one true God and he got people to worship the one true God. But he wasn't perfect. He made some, some really lame brain mistakes. Um, remember Ahab and Jezebel? If you remember, your, I, I can't go into that story. I don't have enough time. But, you know, we know that Jezebel wasn't all that good a person, right? And Ahab, Ahab was a king of the northern kingdom. Jehoshaphat, king of the southern kingdom, king of Judah. Well, he makes an alliance with King Ahab, and through a series of events, uh, Ahab ends up dying. Um, and Jehoshaphat makes it out of that, those battles okay, but, but you get the impression he, he probably shouldn't have, you know, he, he had good intentions to ally himself with Ahab, but that's kind of the mistake his father made, allying himself with the foreign king. Uh, so here we are, after all of that, we get to chapter 20, and in your program today is the, I think it's Common English Bible, or it might be the New Living Translation, I think it was the Common English, which is a recent one. So we could read it right off of there, all right? So if you want to read it, read along, we'll go through the story a little bit, and then we'll, we'll share some stuff. Um, so if you'll notice in 2 Chronicles 20, we're going to see some fear. We are going to see the king was deathly afraid. And fear is natural. This is the main point for today. Fear is natural. We live in a fallen, cursed world. Fallen due to sin of humanity. The world was cursed, and we're still living under that curse. Individually, Jesus defeated the curse for us. So we are no longer cursed as followers of Christ. But the world is still under a curse until he comes again and makes all things new. Heaven and earth will fade away, but Jesus will make a new heaven and a new earth, and it will all be right here. Until then, the world is cursed, and it's dark, and darkness happens, and we shouldn't be excited. You know, it, we're going to be afraid when, dark, when darkness it acts darkly. <laughs> and you say... Afghanistan. Um, and, and then the second point to notice here is that Jehoshaphat did everything he could um, to, to be right in God's eyes. He is considered a, a good king, not an evil king. Uh, he pleased God in most ways. And yet threats come. Threats came against him. And with us, threats come even when you live right and please God. 
you're, it isn't going, everything's not going to be hunky-dory rose garden. And, and, if it, and if it is, then um, we need to kind of look at that because Jesus said, in this world you will have troubles, but I have overcome the world. Be encouraged, he says. I'm with you, and I have overcome the world, but in this world you're going to have troubles. Uh, so, okay, so let's go to first, or Second Chronicles 20, starting at verse uh, Verse 2, Jehoshaphat was told a large army from beyond the sea, from Edom, is coming to attack you. And these were actually three nations, we find out from verse 1, as armies of the Moabites, the Ammonites, and then some of the Meunites uh, declared war on Jehoshaphat. So three foreign kings from east of the Dead Sea have crossed they're crossing the Jordan, and they are going to come against Jehoshaphat and the nation of Judah. So there's a large army from beyond the Dead Sea, and uh, they're already in Hazanon Tamar, which is En Gedi. En Gedi is one of those um, plain areas right next to the Dead Sea on the western side, on the Judah side of the Dead Sea. Uh, and so verse 3, <clears throat> I even highlighted it for you, frightened frightened, Jehoshaphat decided to seek the Lord's help and proclaimed a fast for all Judah. People from all of Judah's city came, uh, from all these cities, they came to ask the Lord for help. Jehoshaphat and his people, they all understood this threat and asked God, they immediately, I mean that was their thing, they immediately went to prayer, which is what we should do but we don't always. Okay, number five. Jehoshaphat stood up in the congregation and Jerusalem in the Lord's temple in front of the new courtyard. Okay, and then here we have the prayer. Let's look at the, his prayer to the Lord. Lord, the God of our ancestors, you alone are God in heaven. You, Lord, rule all the nations, all the kingdoms of the nations. You are so powerful that no one can oppose you. That's a statement of fact, isn't it? See, this isn't false flattery. This isn't, he's, he's not buttering up God so that he can eventually get to a request. He's, he knows who God is and he's praising him for who he is. Verse 7, you, O God, drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and you gave this land to the descendants of your friend Abraham forever. So first he's, praising God for who he is. Now he's praising him for what he's done in their past. Sort of as a remembrance, but also, Lord, you are our God and you did it. You drove out these inhabitants. Verse 8 and 9. They have lived in it and have built a sanctuary in honor of your name. So we, the people of Judah, have lived in it and, and have built a sanctuary in honor of your name in this land, saying, if calamity, sword, flood, plague, or famine comes upon us, we will stand before this temple, before you, because your name is in this temple. We will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. What a great statement of faith that is. So verse 10, he says, so, so look here, Lord, the Ammonites, the Moabites, and those from Mount Seir, those three nations, those three people groups. And these are people that you wouldn't let Israel invade when they came out of Egypt's land. You know, so, it, so the people of Israel, our ancestors, avoided them and did not destroy them. But Lord, here they are, returning the favor by coming to drive us out of your possession that you gave us. And then comes his request, oh God, won't you punish them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We don't know what to do. So we are looking to you for help. And then it says, All Judah is standing before the Lord, even their little ones, wives, and children. That's verse 13. Okay, so let's get a little bit out of this faithful prayer that was born out of fear. So it's fear drove him to prayer, not despair. 
So the threat was real. It was not imagined. So really, it's normal to be afraid. I mean, I love roller coasters like the next person, but when you get up to the top and you're looking down, a little fear hits you, right? And the roller coaster, following the Lord is like riding a roller coaster. There are times when you're like, Lord, how high up are we going to go before we come back down, you know? And then you get up top and you're like, whoa, this is great. I can see all around. I can see Lake Erie. I can see all the rest of the rides at Cedar Point. Uh, and I, oh, oh, <laughs> I, I, can, uh, I can see down there. I knew I was in trouble on the run on the, uh, the dragster ride when they said, sir, you have to take your glasses off and hand them to us. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll hold on to them. No, no sir, you, you need to give us your glasses because uh, we've had too many people lose their glasses. We'll hold them on for you. We'll, we'll, we'll keep them for you. I was like, I wanted to get up on top and see everything. Um, but I, wouldn't have, I would have seen my glasses fly away. So that's what I would have done. So following the Lord is kind of like a roller coaster. And uh, how many of you have been like to Cedar Point? Um, I, know, I know us older folks now, like I, roller coaster, no way. My back would be, I got on one that was one of those wooden ones over there about 10 years ago. And I got off of that thing and I could hardly walk. I was like, oh, that was, that was a mistake. My wife was smart. She sat on the bench and watched. She and her brother. But me and my sister-in-law, we were tough. We were going to go hit all the roller coasters. So, but following Christ is a roller coaster ride. And, you know, if, you go to, if, if, you, if, if you're young and strong and you can take it, you go, to, you go to a place like Cedar Point. It has the most rides of any amusement park in the world, I think. Uh, the number one in terms of rides. I mean, it, that's, a, that's just their thing. As a kid, I would go there, and every year there'd be new rides and new rides. And they're still doing that. Well, anyway, if, if, you, if you don't really challenge yourself and go on the ones that you're afraid of, uh, you're kind of missing something, aren't you? And there are things in the Christian life that are like that. You're like, Lord, don't, don't ask me, you know. I mean, he's not going to ask us all to go to Africa, but that might be something that's fearful. If, Lord, please don't send me to Africa. And that's, you sing that song, and then God says, hey, why don't you go over to Africa? And then you get the deer in the headlights look. But there are other things that God asks us to do. Um, it's not all that much, but our first reaction might be fear. How many of you would be afraid if I said, okay, right now, I'm going to call on you and you get to stand up and pray out loud for all, with all of us. Lead us all in prayer. Now, if you had that fearful reaction that I'm talking about, you have faith, you know God hears your prayers, but you just had faithful fear, Right? because you're afraid of talking in front of people. I might say the wrong thing. Don't let that bother you. Jehoshaphat didn't, didn't worry about that. Faith drove him to prayer, not despair. We need to remember that. Faith, our faith should drive us to prayer, not despair. When I heard about this Afghanistan thing, and I'm like, oh, no. And then not only, first I thought, what a shame, after 20 years, the Taliban has taken over again in Afghanistan. What a shame. And then I thought, oh, it's more than a shame. What if I had been there fighting 10 years ago and now? Or what if my, my son had volunteered and gone into the army and was over there? And when he came, and why are there 20-plus soldiers a day killing themselves? Was it because it was an unwinnable war? Was it because they saw tragedies or they, they, they saw things they couldn't get over? Or, you know, they're, they're, they're trained to do something and sometimes, sometimes they don't even get to do what they were trained to do and they come back and they're like, I did all this work for nothing. I didn't even get to go into a battle. <laughs> what good was that? And so they get depressed. I mean, it's all kinds of weird things. Um, so we need to not despair as people of God. We need to have hope uh, and and. Be like King Jehoshaphat. Immediately go to prayer. And then call your friends to, pr to prayer. People fasted and prayed. It says that he called a fast and people did fast and they did pray. Um, and so from the Lord, from the king's prayer, we learned some things. And here's some more fill in the blanks for you. Um, in verse 6, he recognized the supremacy of God. Lord, you are, you are the God who made everything and you know what's going on. You are supreme. The only real power in this world is you, God. 
He recalled the past victories of the Lord, what he had done in their past. And then he revisited the promises of God. The promise was that we would cry out to you and we get in trouble and you'll hear us and you'll answer. That, he reminded the Lord of that. He revisited, he restated, he reclaimed those promises of God. Um, so this could be a really good way for us to pray, wouldn't it? Start with who God is and then go to what God has done in the past and then revisit all the promises. You promised to be with us, Jesus. You promised us that even in trouble you've overcome the world and that we can be overcomers too. Wow. So we revisit the promises of God. And then the fourth thing is we restate the problem. I don't know about you, but I, I tend to go to number four first. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> whatever the problem is, that's what's on my mind. And I tend, to, I tend to talk about with the Lord how big the problem is, as if he doesn't know. But it would be better if I waited on that and started with how big God is first. <laughs> So I try to start, so I'm, I'm learning a lot from King Jehoshaphat here that I, I need to remember how big our God is that he, that, and, uh, and, and all the past things he's done in the life of his people and in, and in my life. So many victories. And then revisit the promises. Lord, you promised to be with us. You promised to, to if we ask in faith believing. believing. Um, I'm afraid, but I believe. That's why I'm praying to you. I wouldn't pray if I didn't believe, but I still have this fear, and I have the fear because of problem X, Y, Z, which you know all about. And then the, you request salvation. Verse 12 was the request of salvation. Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. So that's a very, that's, can you, ima can you imagine the king of Judah is praying this out loud. He's got an army. He's got, he's not, people are looking at him saying, King Jehoshaphat, you got all the power. Uh, with the, uh, as far as the people goes here, you, you got the power. You're the king. And he says, no, we, we are powerless, Lord. We don't know what to do. We need you to tell us what to do. Wow. So he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to look weak in front of his people, was he? He admitted it, and he admitted it out loud in front of everybody in his prayer to God. They all heard it. And I can imagine the people being even more, oh, wow, if our king is afraid. Woo! He's praying like that. We, we in trouble. <laughs> We in big trouble. All right. So it's not all that huge of a prayer, uh, but he followed a very nice pattern. Uh, I really would encourage you to fill in those blanks. And uh, you know the format, uh, when it got put in the bulletin's a little bit wonky, but I think you can figure it out. Um, so, but save that pattern of prayer. And put that in your Bible uh, so that when you've got a major problem and you come to the Lord, you're, gonna pull, you're going to follow those five R's first. Um, and by the time you get to the request, you know, you'll know that God will be, you'll, you'll have a sense of peace in your heart, even if you still have a little bit of fear that God knows what's going on and that he can and will help, all right? So then the scripture says that the Lord's spirit came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Metaniah, a Levite in the line of Asaph, as he stood in the middle of the assembly. Pay attention, all of Judah, every inhabitant of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, pay attention, he says. This is what the Lord says to you. Don't be afraid or discouraged by this great army because the battle is not yours. The battle isn't yours. It belongs to God. March out against them tomorrow since they will be coming through the Ziz Pass. Meet them at the end of the valley. 
that opens into the Jeru Jeruel wilderness. And then the prophet goes on. You don't need to fight this battle. Just take your places. Stand ready. Watch how the Lord who is with you will deliver you, Judah and Jerusalem. Don't be afraid or discouraged. Go out tomorrow and face them. The Lord will be with you. <laughs> when I first read that, I was like, uh, march out tomorrow against them of the battles of the Lord. Why do I even need to march out against them? Why would we need to do that? Okay, it tells us where to go. We'll go there, and then, but you won't need to, just, but take your places and stand ready. Okay, we're ready to fight. Uh, be ready to fight, but watch how the Lord delivers you. Oh, that's why we need to go, so we can watch. Oh, I get it. So now we will know that God is with us and will deliver us. Um, okay, all right. Uh, don't be afraid or discouraged. And he may have even uh, th thought, uh, in his, Jehoshaphat might have thought, okay, I won't be afraid of looking stupid. I'm going to tell him, hey, we're, the battle's the Lord's, we're going to win, but we're all going to go out there as if we're going to fight. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going to look really stupid. But I'm not going to be afraid of that. I'm going to do what God told me to do. So he did. And when you read on in the story, the rest of the story is, is really incredible. Um, after, the, after the prophet said that, King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. So he immediately went into an act of worship. And, and the people followed him. They worshiped. Uh, all the Levites... And all these clans, they stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. And they did it with a very loud shout. Whoa, that was very undignified. Very loud shout. I wonder if they shouted the name of God. That would be cool. Of course, they were awed, they were awed by the name of God, and they really wouldn't say it out loud, but who knows? Maybe they just said, the Lord. Who knows? Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of, Te of Tekoa. Um, on the way... Jehoshaphat stopped and he addressed the troops. So they're all ready to go. They're, they're on their way and he stopped. Wait a minute, hold up. Oh, stop. Hop, ho. Here we go. Er, uh, he says, listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. And so then the king does this awesome thing. One of my favorites, being a musician and a singer and all of that. And I love to lead worship, and it's really a passion of mine. This is what he does. So he had done this, consulted the people, and then here's what the king does. He appoints singers to be the point men in his army. You know, usually you put your, like, your best guys out front, don't you? The point people. They t you take the point in case something comes against us. He puts the singers out front. He's like, hey, Let's put the military choir out front. Are you guys that can sing praises to the Lord? We want the choir out front. And if they hear us coming, they're going to hear us singing praises to our God. And so he did that. Can you picture that? A bunch of singers. You know, I wonder if they had little, little shakers. and uh, Who knows? Doesn't say anything about instruments, but boy, they were singing up. And here's what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord. Go into battle. Hope we don't have to fight. But we'll give thanks to the Lord because his love endures forever. And so at the very moment that they began to sing in praise, oh, boy, that one just jumped off the page at me. That's verse 22, if you're following in your Bibles. Write this one down, uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22. Write down 22, verse 22, to go check it out in your scripture, in your Bible later. It's, I don't have it in there. Uh, in your program, but here's what it says. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord acted. The Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves. First, the armies of Moab and Ammon fought against the Mount Seir people. Um, they killed every one of them. So the two gained up against the one. And then it says, after they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So who knows what, what the Lord put into their minds to get them to attack each other, you know? It's like, maybe they were arguing over who was going to get the plunder, you 
know, they were so sure they were going to win. Maybe they were arguing, no, that's our plan. Oh, no, this was our idea, so we get it. No, you don't. We're bigger than you. You know, whoever wins, wins, finders, keepers, and all that. So, you know, if we win, we should get the stuff, and, and uh, maybe, maybe it should be whoever has the most uh, in our army left. Then we, we're the ones that get the plunder. Who knows? It doesn't really say. It just says they began attacking each other. And so... Here's what happens. When the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. So these three huge armies are all wiped out, and they're all dead, and these guys are standing there. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Whoa. You know? <laughs> oh, oh, boy. And so... They went down to plunder all the dead bodies because that's kind of what you did. You know, you go down and you, you, the battle is won. And so Jehoshaphat's army, they all go down there. It took them, I think it says, three or four days to get all the, all the plunder from this enemy that had threatened to them, that had threatened them. It's pretty cool. Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps and lyres and trumpets and electric guitars and 12 strings and keyboards and they even had a drum set on wheels. Doesn't say that, does it? But harps and lyres or lyres or however you say that. They did have trumpets. Now those are loud. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. How cool. And if the chapter ended right there, you'd think, oh man, Jehoshaphat, he's the man. He, we finally had a good king who did all the right stuff, and he ended well. And then the chapter says, well... Oh, it didn't really end so well for Jehoshaphat. <laughs> he made a lame brain alliance, just like his dad had done. He allied himself with, so here's the rest of the story. He, he allied himself with, uh, oh, my mom, I need to do, 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 do. where is it? Oh, he made an alliance with King Ahaziah of the northern kingdom of Israel, who was very wicked, the Bible says. So there's this evil king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, makes an alliance with this guy. And together they build ships that are going to be trading ships so that they can go all, all the way to Tarshish, which is where the tra main trading port in the Mediterranean is. So they build all these ships, and then guess what happens at the very end? A prophet comes and says uh, to Jehoshaphat and says, Hey, Jehoshaphat, because you have allied yourself with King Ahaziah, the Lord will destroy your work. So the ships met with disaster and never put out to sea. And then Jehoshaphat died, and he was buried with his ancestors, and his son Jehoram became king, and blah, blah, blah. And then his son Jehoram was a bad guy, and he just went and killed all his brothers. So see how things can turn on a dime sometimes. Uh, poor Jehoshaphat, he was a great hero until, until the very end. He made a, a terrible alliance. Um, I wonder if he stopped being, af being afraid of what God would think if he did something like that. Sounds like he did. Um, Maybe he should have been a little bit more afraid and had faith in God. Um, so uh, I guess the answer is, I've got here in your program, what do I have here? It says, when the Lord fights for you, don't be afraid to do what he tells you to do. Face your enemies with God beside you or before you. Okay, have you ever seen Star Wars? Uh, What's the second movie? Empire Strikes Back? Okay, Luke is there. Luke goes to this uh, jungle planet and he meets with Yoda and Yoda's going to train him to be a Jedi and he's training him. And, you, and uh, Luke had a vision that he was going to have to face Darth Vader and so uh, uh, Yoda's talking to him saying, you should, you know, it's going to be a hard thing for you. You're going to have to face your fears. You're going to have to face him. And and then uh, Luke Skywalker says, I'm not afraid. And Yoda says, you will be, you will be, you will be. So Christians, you will be afraid. 
If you're not afraid to do what God calls you to do, you're probably not hearing everything he's calling you to do. Because he's going to ask you to go talk to that neighbor who doesn't know him. He's going to ask you to witness to a person you just met, but maybe you saw him two days later, and, and now you have a chance to talk to him about the Lord and the truth about the Bible. You know, Maybe you're a little fearful if that happens. Maybe... Um, you know, at first when I was going to be a pastor, I thought, well, eventually I'm going to have to go to seminary. I'm going to have to uproot my family. We're, we're going to go to Kentucky. Kids are little. It got to the point where I was more afraid to stay home in the Chelsea area than I was to go. By the time I went, by the time we went, <laughs> I realized I, I'll I actually be more afraid if I don't answer the call of God than if I do. But is it going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy. Did we make some mistakes? Yeah, we made some mistakes. But we went, and it's, I've never regretted it. It's always been awesome. I talked to my dad some, one time, and I'm telling him all this stuff, and he goes, well, that's the Lord. That's the Lord working in your life. I'm like, well, for one thing, that's right. But for another thing is, who are you, and what have you done with my father? <laughs> He, he wouldn't have said something like that when I was a kid. Always oh, very encouraging. He would have said, oh, I have faith in you. You can do whatever. You know, you'll, you'll handle it. You can deal with it. Very encouraging guy, but, uh, but instead he gave God the credit, and I was like, wow, my dad's figured this out. How neat. <clears throat> He's 40 years older than me, so he would have been probably 75, almost 80 when he, when he said that to me. So... Um, we have much to fear today. I ended with this. Uh, I could have made a huge list. And, but from, the ta from Taliban to terrorists, from a virus to variants, there's plenty to be afraid of today, isn't there? Right? But when God calls us, uh, and then, oh, my last sentence. I, can't, hmm, I wrote that. That's not too bad. Don't waste your fear. Use it to propel you into prayer. Don't waste your fear. Use it to propel you into prayer. God may calm your fears, or he, or he just may remind you, hey, that's the roller coaster you want. I built it. It's safe. Many people have ridden the roller coaster before. <laughs> if you have to close your eyes for a minute and hold on for dear life, that's fine, but you're going to make it to the end because I made the roller coaster. So there you go. So we're going to have a time of prayer, but before then I want to sing In Christ Alone. This is a great affirmation of faith. Uh, so if our, our worship team could come on up, we're going to sing that in Christ alone. This will get us ready for prayer. And if you have a prayer request, I have one here from Betty and Larry. Okay, I think I can read that one. I got another one up here. Pray for the kids going back to school. Okay, there's Peggy Dunn and lots of other things. And then, ooh, there's a couple more. Seth and Lon Lon and... Uh, Okay, kids starting school this week. Another one for the kids. I also have one here I'm going to share with you in a moment when we get to the prayer. It's a prayer request from, from Franklin Graham. So I'll share that with you when we get to prayer. Well, I want us to respond to the Lord to say, hey, in, in Christ alone, my hope is found. Amen? Cool. Oh, and there's the words of Jesus. Peace I leave you, with you my peace I give you. Mm. All right, let's stand together if you're able. In Christ alone my hope is found
to come up here and kneel, you may want to uh, bow your heads and close your eyes. You may want to look up to heaven with your eyes. That's fine. Uh, the ancient church prayed a lot like this. Their eyes open and their hands raised. And that's a, that's a uh, position of worship. Um, you, it's recorded on the walls of the catacombs of Rome, the Christians underneath Rome. They, they drew pictures of their people worshiping and praying unto God. So that's kind of where the raise your hand things come from, is it? giving glory to God. All right, before we go to specific things, we need to pray for our nation. And um, this email comes from Franklin Grant, who says, urgent prayer needed for the people of Afghanistan. Join me this Sunday, August 22nd, for a day of prayer. So this is a prayer for the entire day. And I say, may fear drive us to prayer, not despair. Thousands of people are desperately trying to escape from Afghanistan after the country's fall to the Taliban. These Islamic extremists who have now taken Afghanistan back by force, well, they have a history of brutality, including beheadings and public executions. Time is short. The need is urgent. That is why I'm calling for a day of prayer this Sunday, August 22nd. One more little thing he says, when the with the Taliban blocking access to the airport and all exit routes, this is a life or death situation for Christians and other religious minorities and all those who worked with or for America over the past two decades. There is no hope for these people to get out safely apart from a miracle from the hand of God. And that's what we need to pray for, a miracle from the hand of God difficult, tragic situation, will you join me in praying for God to intervene in a mighty way? So Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We agree with our, our brother, Franklin Graham, Lord, our brother in the Lord. We agree with him uh, that apart from a miracle from you, it looks really bad. Um, please put your hand of protection around your people who are still there and perhaps ha can't even get to the airport. We know, Lord, they're being stopped on the way. They're being asked for their names and their identities. And they're being asked, uh, even those who, who helped Americans are in trouble. And so, Lord, we're, we're asking you to overrule in that situation that you would break through and do what only you can do. May the hand of God, the powerful hand of God, Lord, you are, you are the mighty one, the powerful one. You have done it before. You can do it again. Uh, you promised to be with your people, so Lord, be with those who know you, especially those who know you, who are, uh, for all intents and purposes, behind enemy lines, and they just want to go home. And so, Lord, we ask that you would, your hand would be upon them, and that you would, um, you would blind and confuse the enemy, uh, that you would let, pe that they would just let people walk through who, perhaps they are not supposed to let go through. Uh, help them to either not see them or not hear them or not, or not be concerned about them. Help them, you know, uh, just, you've done it before. We've heard it before, Lord. People smuggling Bibles into Soviet Union and, and they, the, the customs, they open the trunk and they see nothing there. They, they don't even see the cases of Bibles in the trunk of this guy's car. And he did it over and over and over again. So stuff like that. You can blind people, to, to see what they're not supposed to see. So, But Lord, we ask that your hand would be strong in this uh, situation that you would bring your power to bear, especially for your people 
there. And Lord, I want to lift up a prayer uh, for, our, for our wonderful military, Lord. Um, they fought. They gave their lives. They gave their limbs, their eyes, their arms, their legs. They were blown up. They were messed with they PTSD and mental illness, Lord. Broken, broken spirits. And to now, they must be, many of them must be sinking into despair that their sacrifice was for naught, was for nothing. Uh, Lord, please give them hope. Uh, help them to reach out for hope. If they feel like le le uh, ending their own lives, Lord, we ask um, that you would break through that brain fog, that you would break through whatever it takes, send people, send uh, Send your spirit and help them, Lord, we pray. We thank you for our men and women who have served. May they know how appreciated they are by all of us. And Lord, we're going to come to some special prayer requests from some individuals. Betty and Larry, their brother-in-law, Doug, had his gallbladder out yesterday. Well, they had to open him up so that he will be in extended time uh, rehabilitating, Lord. Um, so please be with, with Dave Bates. Um, heal him, help him to recover from this surgery. Um, it's sort of routine these days, but any surgery is serious. So Lord, uh, heal his body. You know what's going on in there. You, we ask for your healing to spread through him, even now as your people are praying. <clears throat> Oh, Lord, um, we lift up our brother in the Lord. Uh, Barb Hahn says, my brother Jim Long, as he is, has a heart procedure this week. And so, you want to just put your hand right there on Jim's shoulder. Anybody would want to gather around Jim who's having a heart procedure? So let's, let's pray for Jim. Lord, thank you for Jim. Thank you for his love for you and Lord, we gather around Jim even now because uh, you have your hand upon him. Um, you have answered so many prayers. Uh, you have given him a life of faith and, and joy and love in you. I thank you, Lord, for his smile that he brings to church every week. Uh, may your blessings flow upon him all the more as he has this heart procedure, Lord. I pray that uh, many of us, Lord, have had this AFib thing and others with our heart and other issues, so, but you know, again, you made his heart, and we pray that you would restore it to perfection. In this, in Jesus' name. Okay. Lord, we have a praise, and we want to thank you for our missionaries, Seth and Lon Lon Van Tiflin, missionaries to Asia. They're having a baby girl due in February. Lan Lan has been waiting for uh, an interview to become a citizen so that the family can travel to Asia for missions, Lord. Uh, we pray that Lan Lan would become a citizen of the United States. Open doors, Lord, that no one can shut. We've been praying for her for a while for this. She needs to become a citizen uh, of our nation, and she'll be a dual citizen. So I think it's uh, Thailand, Taiwan. Lord, I think it's Thailand, uh, but at any rate, Lord, you know. And, and so, so just make a way for her to become a citizen and keep this baby safe. Um, help her to, to deliver this baby girl so that in February her, her two older brothers will just be um, so excited and joyful. And then we have a couple of requests, Lord. We want to lift up our children going back to school. We lift them up to you, Lord, because it's going to be hot and uh, they may have concerns about uh, strains of COVID and other things and uh, whatever protocols the schools are following, we, you know, I don't know, but you know, and, and so I just prayed, Lord, that the children would be safe, uh, that you would keep them safe on the buses and in the schools, in the schoolroom and in the classroom. Help them um, to, uh, to be, oh, uh, caring for each other and to notice that it's not just about them, it's about all their classmates, Lord, and some of these kids come from broken home situations where they've lost a parent or the family has split up 
And uh, it's a way large percentage, Lord, I know than when I was in school, a way larger percentage of, of the children. And uh, so they need extra help. So we pray for, for them, for you to be with them and bless them. And, uh, and so many teens are suffering from depression. Um, we can think of many reasons perhaps why uh, our teens can be depressed, that maybe there's a standard they can't fulfill or... Um, we, it's, it's very, Lord, we know it's complicated, um, but we ask you to meet them in their depression and raise them up out of it. Um, we know teens. We have some that we know and love, uh, even from our own church, Lord, and we pray that you would give them strength and joy. May the joy of the Lord be their strength, and may the joy lift the depression so that they would be joyful. And I, I pray, Lord, that the joy of the Lord would be contagious in our schools. Lord, all this and more we pray. We thank you and give you the glory. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, you all had a lot of great prayer requests today. Go ahead and have a seat for just a minute. Uh, we just had our gift of prayer. And... The rummage sale for missions is still going on. Do you know that total raise so far from the garage sale and then the downstairs sale and other stuff, over $750 has been raised for missions, all from little trinkets and doodads and gizmos and stuff. So isn't that neat? And we're just asking for a donation for the most part. Uh, there are more things that came in this week, and it's right below us in the Fellowship Hall. You're welcome to go down and check it out. Uh, but to know that the money we're raising is, is going to missions. Right. Yep. Yep. We just have signs we put out when we're open and we bring them back in when we're closed and one more week, is that right? Who knows? She might keep going. We'll see. Elizabeth is a, she's on a roll. Well, so. Right. Okay. Yeah. And if you can help this week by being here to help open up or do, do part of it, there's a sign-up sheet out there on the table. Is it going around? Okay, it's going around. Clipboard. The wonderful clipboard of passing. Okay, as always, our tithes and offerings will be uh, in the boxes up front or in the back there on your way out. Uh, thank you for doing that. It saves us from passing the plates and passing our germs around. Uh, that's one thing we can do to to uh, to avoid the germ situation. And so, thank you for doing that. Um, Leanne has one more thing to share. Two more things to share. Okay. Yes, so let me, um, for if, if you're new, you may not be aware of, we have these um, little bread box piggy bank things, and you save your change in there, and that money, once you turn it in, ends up going to missions. Just go to the children. Doug, that goes to Dale Woods, which is the Middle East, right? Um, and then the baby bottles she talked about, those go to, to pregnancy centers uh, to help, it's alternative, you know, to help uh, pregnant moms in Lapeer and in Cairo. Uh, we, we split it up between those two um, for Christian counseling for young moms, okay? So that they will do the right thing with their babies, right? Okay. Uh, I think all hearts clear, then let's stand and... Praise the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Ready? Here we go. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. 
Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, have a great week. Have a God-filled day and a God-filled week. Amen.